Well, welcome back, guys. And on our AM transmitter build based off the uh, pine board project, it's time to start on this circuit. And this is our mic preamp. And our mic preamp uses a 12AX7 tube. Now, half of the tube, as you can see, here is going to be the preamp itself. The other half of the tube is acts more like a driver for the transmitter. So all your gain is done in the first stage of the tube and then uh, the second stage becomes the driver. So you know you're using both stages of the tube. And I'm looking here at the chassis and we are going with the one that has the uh, flat and bright switch that does enhance the audio makes it great when you go to bright the audio doesn't sound as good but it'll punch through noise a lot better than the flat frequency response and you can see here on the other schematic there was no um, flat or bright switch on it so I decided why not go ahead and build the circuit with the flat bright switch. You know, if you don't need it, you set it to flat, but when you do need it, you uh, flip it on and get through that noise. So, I have our tube socket, and this little tube socket is ceramic and it's got the uh, ring that holds it and you can mount this two different ways you can drop the socket in pull it from under the chassis or you can drill the hole drop it in from the top of the chassis just by turning the ring over and bolt it to the top so whichever way you like to go on these sockets they're kind of universal and I like the way that they're designed and uh, so you know they'll help pretty good but anyway uh, we kind of need to look at where we're going to uh, mount the tube at now on the front panel we're looking at probably putting the three um, controls potentiometers there's 250k and a 10k uh, the first one will be for the gain the second one is treble and the third one is bass so we're probably going to put these down here below the top chassis kind of in the, the middle here and then we'll drop the tube somewhere back here behind it in about that area and see that gives us all this room over here for future expansion and we will have another small transformer that will go here when it comes in for 12 volts but that's no problem and uh, you know it just gives us a, a lot of room here this way we can keep the wiring short from the tube socket to the front controls and we can lay in a couple of terminal strips on either side of the tube socket so that the uh, components are real close and not having to run fall off we'll mount a mic jack on the front and we'll use some RG174 coax either the uh, the black coax or I also had some uh, RG174 coax that has the uh, metal covering uh, a metal shield on the outside this is double shielded and there's a real light film of plastic on the outside of it so uh, you know you can run this and you don't have to worry about anything uh, shorting out on it I'm using the uh, voltmeter and it doesn't short out so <laughs> yes it, uh, you can you can't even hardly see it but it is a very um, light film of clear plastic around this coax this is real good stuff here nothing wrong with the black um, 
it's flexible it's easier to route than what the uh, metal jacketed double st stuff is but I think for this project we'll be using this it'll be short runs anyway now I don't have a green leaf punch that will fit this hole and uh, you know green leaf punches are nice to have I have a few I don't have a whole complete set uh, used to many years ago but you know these things wow out over time so I do need to get me another whole complete set of green leaf punches so I'll be uh, drilling this out with this heavy duty hole saw this is a 13 16 and I had these in different sizes and uh, as you can see it's spring loaded on the drill bit um, the drill bits replaceable the uh, carbide in, uh, inserts are brazed in and you can resharpen these but these do a pretty decent job of uh, drilling out chassis and so forth so there we go we got our hole drilled in and as you can see they do a lot better job than the old traditional type hole saws um, these things here kind of just you know they're so aggressive with the teeth they just throw stuff everywhere and they leave the hole jagged I mean this has not been deburred or anything and there is no jagged metal sticking up you know no problems at all sticking your finger in there and you don't get cut or nicked or get a metal splinter stuck in your finger those uh, type of hole saws are much better than these old cheap things from your local big box stores so you know when you're building stuff it's always nice to have this kind of stuff especially these uh, step drill bits if you got a hole you need to go in make it just a little bit bigger these are uh, perfect and we got these in many different sizes and then you know the good old traditional uh, green leaf punch that's just hard to beat uh, this one here is a I think it's a 28.3 millimeter which is three quarter hole and uh, they just do an excellent job you know they ride on a bearing you drill a hole screw this off put this through the hole you just drilled say exactly like the uh, hole that we just put in there fits right on there screw this on the back and uh, tighten down on it and it comes out with a perfect uh, hole again hardly no deburring whatsoever with it okay two sockets installed and uh, we can install a 12AX7 with no problems and uh, it's the underview side I did put a uh, terminal lug here I'll bend that up so you can solder ground to it and now it's time to uh, go ahead and drill out the front for uh, our controls that's going to be mounted in there now the way I usually do this, I'll put a piece of tape on the front, then I can use a uh, tape measure and get the uh, exact center. Which is going to be six inches. to have my little screw to hold the front panel on just about a sixteenth of an inch off center but that's no problem and why don't y'all get a square and, and square it here and mark a line then we'll uh, get the distance we can get the controls set far apart I don't want them right on top of each other uh, also you know the kit comes with these highly colorful chicken head knobs so we want the controls far enough apart so that the uh, 
points so the back don't collide with one another so you know we got to make sure we get them at the correct distance I was supposed to what we're going to go with a inch and a quarter between the knobs but uh, if we put this here in about the center and then turn this one in about the center you can see just how close they are so I sided the back the two outside ones up to an inch and a half that gives about three-eighths of an inch in between the uh, knobs and which I think of you know look a lot better instead of being just jammed right on top of each other that's why your fingers when you turn it you're not hitting the other knob and uh, knocking it off now I got to get the center of this switch because I want everything in a line I've already got that measurement so I'll get that measured on these lines and I can get this drilled out I'm going to have the holes drilled for the uh, potentiometers I've got this little locking stud on the uh, side of the control and we want these with the terminals down so that locking stud needs to be on this side and normally how I do this to measure for that locking stud needs to be drilled I don't remember the uh, the knobs when they're installed um, some knobs will hide that lock stud so you can't see it these particular knobs will not so what we're going to end up doing is just cutting these off and using um, a star washer behind this so it won't twist around but if you needed to drill the hole for this and your knobs are large enough to hide it just uh, put the hole in the control in through the front with your terminals up and just rub it back and forth and right down here it will scrape into your tape the alignment of that pin and you can just drill a hole through it <laughs> so there we go our wild and colorful knobs are installed on the potentiometers it's probably going to take a while to get used to these colors but hey I have plenty of other knobs I can change them out to all black if I want to but uh, we'll see how these grow on us kind of interesting looking so this will be gain, treble and bass and with that said all we need to do is start wearing up the supply now well all we need to do now is start wearing up the uh, tube to the controls and adding in all the components and then install a mic jack okay guys now that we have our tube socket and our three potentiometers installed we can go ahead and start wiring this system up and uh, get that much of it done now when you look at this it's just like it's really all over the place and it sort of is but the first thing we want to start with is the grounding and to simplify it you see we come from our ground bus and we come up to one side of the gain control was grounded we come across and we can see that one side of the base control was grounded and then we come back and uh, this goes up to the input and output which we're not worried about at this moment but we can look at the tube and we can see that pins 3, 4, and 5 are also grounded so we need to ground these points here we don't have to actually run wires all over the place we can ground right to the uh, chassis or to a ground point so that will keep our wiring kind of short and uh, you can see it's no problem at all to uh, get that wired in so one thing that you will find on these ceramic type sockets they are not numbered so you look at it and you go okay how do you figure out which way it is if you look at the top of the socket you see our space which is our keyway here this is pin 1 and it counts around this way to pin 9 so just remember 
always on most of these sockets this is going to be pin one two three four etc right on around to pin nine so then when you turn it over and look at the bottom side you know pin one starts here and it goes clockwise on the bottom side so all we're going to do is we're going to take as a marker and we just want to mark that or pin one now if you you know you, you can't keep up with it you can come down here and just write on the chassis or we'll put a piece of tape around it and write the pin numbers on it and after you get wired in you can remove that tape but it's pretty easy on the bottom side first top one on the keyway and go around pin one through pin nine so we know that pins three four and five there's one two there's three four and five I have bent these pins over and there's a ground bug right here on this mounting screw so we can run us one single wire from here and then right down to this grounding lug we'll sort of this in but we won't sort of that in yet because we're going to run our ground wire over to the parts on these potentiometers we'll connect the up to those legs on the potentiometers okay the grounding is done to the uh, two outer parts and uh, I just had a terminal lug put here to uh, ground that in now we'll be coming back and cutting these screws off shorter it's just that I'm leaving them long for the time being in case we need to change up and add another terminal lug to something somewhere uh, pins 3, 4, and 5 is grounded to the terminal lug here on the uh, back side and you know since there's that's quite a bit going on on this layout and you know actually it's only a, about a dozen parts but you know there's a lot of wiring showing back and forth and it can be a little uh, hard to uh, understand now if you print this off, off of uh, Bob Howell's uh, website um, these lines will actually be in color so that helps you quite a bit to understand but out here in the shop I've only had a uh, commercial black and white printer I don't use color out here in the shop just not really needed so another way around that is uh, as you install stuff you see I have highlighted these grounds that I have done in orange and that lets me know that those circuits are done so uh, you know that's just a, a way for you know if you're just getting started out how to uh, keep up with it makes it you know quite a bit easier but you know if you really like um, you can go out also print off the plain schematic and build off in there it just depends on you know how you want to do it and uh, which way you want to go on it again the great thing about building the project like this you build it the way you want to you do it the way that you want to um, you know as long as you got the the basic design you can go in and add and change and route things the way that you want to do it now looking here at the schematic you can see that uh, these front controls um, the center wiper and this side is tied together and then it goes over this is from the base it goes over to the treble and then on the center wiper it simply comes over and goes to the right hand side of the gain control so we need to add these wires in now and um, if you look at the way that I got this schematic or diagram laying is exactly the way it is on the uh, transmitter so you can see we got to tie these two wires together and then jump over to this pin and then come on the center wiper and come all the way over and go to this lug on the uh, gain control okay guys I got the uh, Parts grounded just like they're supposed to be, and uh, 
we look at the schematic for the diagram layout you can see it's kind of backwards from what this is so you got remember when you're looking at this you're looking straight on to the front panel so if you turn this around like this you know that matches the front panel so when you're doing this you got to make sure that you are uh, remembering that our terminals are coming out the top if the schematic was flipped around so this is the side here that that grounds the next thing we want to do you can see that on the base control the center wiper and this terminal is tied together then it comes over and ties to the terminal here on the treble the center wiper then comes over and ties to the far left terminal on the gain control and we'll be running these wires down here around the bottom and we'll go ahead and get those uh, put in this terminal here we will not be soldering yet as there's a point one capacitor that will be mounted to it now the good thing about this is that you know when you're building scratch building something like this um, you know he was nice enough to give this layout now I know this layout is kind of busy looking so uh, you know that's why I when I did the grounds I had removed everything but just the ground runners um, you know you can go on and download just the schematic and build right off in it the layout will help you to get the parts laid out like they should be to keep everything because this is already a proven design another way to keep up with it is every time that you uh, you do something is to take the page and you see how I have marked these with the orange marker and this lets me know that those parts are done so everything you time you do something off just go ahead and mark it off on your schematic with a highlighter and you know that that part is done okay I got all parts wired in as per the diagram and I left the uh, wire on this terminal loose and that was for that uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor that's going to connect to that uh, just have to make sure that when you uh, connect that you get that joint soldered you don't want to leave it not soldered now I know what you're probably thinking uh, buddy you put the switches so close together you didn't put leave room to put the bright dim switch well I've got a thought for that and let me show you what I'm thinking about doing now in the kit for the uh, mic preamp, they didn't supply a switch for the bright dim because that was sort of a uh, an add-on, and uh, all the components are here for it, but I didn't get a switch for that. But in the transmitter kit, they gave me this little miniature switch, and. We're not going to use that in the transmitter. Our and and what this was for in the transmitter was to actually key the transmitter. Well, we're not going to use that in the transmitter. We are going to have a uh, mic jack on the front, and it's going to have a PTT in it. I'm also thinking about go ahead and putting in a switch so that you can switch on the transmitter. Like you did in the old Johnsons and stuff. So you can go either way. Uh, either key it by the um, microphone PTT. Or you can plug in a mic and key the transmitter. So we're going to use this switch for our bright dim. Now it's only a single pole double throw. And as you can see on the uh, diagram that is all that is needed. And here it is on the schematic. 
You can see uh, bright has a point double oh one and flat has just a point oh one. And I'm thinking about mounting it directly over the uh, center control, which is our treble, because in the uh, diagram or layout, this is where it is connected to, is to this one terminal of your treble control. So if I mount it directly over the top of it, um, down would be flat, up would be bright. Someone in the video once made a comment, uh, buddy you don't never show any failures or screw ups or nothing. Well that's not entirely true. Uh, I did back a couple years ago, did a bloopers video. And uh, anyway I had put a piece of tape on front of the uh, rig to mark out where I drilled a hole for the uh, bright dim switch. And I pulled the piece of tape off, and look at that. Ain't that pretty? <laughs> the tape pulled the uh, paint right off. The primer's still there, but the uh, paint come off. Luckily, uh, it's not too hard to fix. I'll just have to remove... Uh, the jewel, the power switch, remove the uh, chicken head knobs and the nuts and then take the six screws back out. Sand the front panel back down and respray it. But that's not going to stop us from uh, continuing this build. Like I said, there's nothing that's uh, keeping me from taking this front panel off at any time. But yeah, there you go. There's a uh, mistake right there. And uh, when I pulled that piece of tape off, and I said, what is this? And I looked behind it, and I said, you got to be kidding me. Well, you know, mistakes do happen. That's part of the process. Well, guys, I just couldn't bear it no more. I went ahead and removed the front panel. Just had to take all the nuts off and uh, remove the pilot lamp and the switch I put in. And... Took it on out and gave it a good sanding back down to bare metal. I primed it this time with some better primer. And I think what it was is that I bought that metal from Lowe's and it's got an oily substance on it. And I tried washing it off and thought maybe it had got gun. I even used some uh, acetone on it. But apparently in that middle down here I didn't get all the uh, oil off of it and that caused the... Uh, primer to release when I put that tape on it but it sanded back down to the metal I put three coats of good primer sealer on it this time and when that dries I'm gonna go out and uh, wet sand it and then I'll go ahead and spray it again luckily I have two more cans of this uh, smoke gray paint and it's made by Rust-Oleum and you can see just how ugly the front of this thing is without that front panel. It shows what the uh, original case was, which is a Maverick 250 made by DNA. And it was a 11 meter amplifier is what it was. So, another old splatter box off the air. Um, it's ridiculous when guys even try to run stuff like this. Uh, just to, to, this one had eight tubes and it had four driving four and just the price of the tubes just outweighed what this thing is even uh, worth and the tubes were gone in this one I got it, it was a complete unit but uh, you know we were able to scrap a lot of parts out of it now I still have the uh, original meters that came out of it and you see it says DNA. Uh, I could clean these up and check them and see if they work and install them back in the original holes. There's two of them that goes in here. And if you go on Bob Howe's 
Pine Boy Project on his website, you can see where they made a field strength meter to, um, you know, to go with this unit. And it wouldn't be hard to turn one of these into a field strength meter to show you relative power out. So, I don't know, I might think of that. You know, all I gotta do is just punch the hole in the outer cast. And, uh, it would be something to think about, you know. I think that would, uh, cleaned up, you know, we can print off another uh, indicator sheet to go in there. And, uh, mount it in there and put our field strength circuit in it. And, you know, that would be, uh, something to think about if we wanted to do that you could actually put a second one in here and use it for uh, modulation to uh, look at your modulation so you had your modulation and your power uh, I don't know we'll, we'll see uh, leave your comments down below on that see what you think so uh, directly under this switch that we installed for the bright dim I drilled a hole out here and this way we can run our .01 capacitor on one side and our .001 on the other side put some uh, spaghetti strap on them I run them through and connect them right to the uh, treble switch and then uh, we can have flat and bright and that way we can keep the uh, wires as short as possible now, since I do have some paint, I'll go back with a little small paintbrush and touch up around these holes. I may install a grommet in this. I don't know yet. Uh, it's really not needed, but we could. And then, you know, you got your one center wire. Right here, you can see the .01, which is your flat, and then your .001, which is your bright circuit. And it goes to just a uh, single pole double throw switch. And then it comes right back in and feeds pin 1 of your 12 AX7. So I got a switch pushed over to the left, which will be flat on this side, bright on that side. And what we got to do is make sure we get the uh, right terminals connected. And this always should be on these little switch. It's always going to be opposite of the way the bat is pointing so that would be our flat position is on this top terminal over here on this side that would be this terminal here then we have our center and then we'll have our bright so I'm gonna install a 103 cap from that terminal down to our lug here on our trouble control and I'll put some uh, spaghetti wrap on these so they can't short out and there we go you can see our two capacitors are installed this is flat this is bright they go to this side of the uh, treble terminal and they uh, just sneak right through this hole and connect to either side of that switch. Now the middle wire will come down and uh, connect over to pin 1 of the 12AX7 on the switch. And they see the capacitors are connected to uh, either side of the switch. Then we'll come off the center pin of the switch and sneak over and come over here to pin one of the 12AX7. Okay, so uh, now that the uh, flat and bright is connected, the only other thing left for the front controls other than this point one capacitor that's not hooked up yet and we can wait till we get some terminal strips up there it is on the gain control with this 50k pot the, the wiper comes up and is connected to pin 7 
So we'll go ahead and get that wired in now. So we got a piece of yellow wire here. Let me move the camera so I'm not uh, right in your way. Maybe that be a little easier. All I've done was just put a hook in it. This is multi-stranded wire, by the way. And no, I'm not running no Pacific color codes. We got that hooked under. Now I'll just uh, squeeze it together. sort of here and pull this off some. Go ahead and make that connection. Now we can route this on over here and connect it to pin 7 which is going to be this pin right here. In the way that you know that real easily you know pin 1 is over here this is a nine pin socket, so three back would be pin seven. I'll leave my wire a little bit long. Just go ahead and fish it on through there the way I want it. Pliers. That's about how much we need. Take it all. Get some good old wire strippers. Dino uh, sent these to me uh, a couple of years ago. Twist the ends together. Sometimes you can uh, tend this multi-stranded wire and you won't have this problem that I'm having. But this wire here loves to wick up solder right on into the insulation. That makes it uh, kind of hard to bend. Need to clean that socket now. There we go. Now I can uh, reform my wire the way I want it. Keep it right next to the uh, chassis. And there we go. So that's another connection made. So you know the, the goal is the, of this is to uh, try to put in all your low hanging components first that's going to go to ground or go to something that's close by before you put any terminal strips in. And uh, on the next two you can see on pin 9 and pin 8 we got a 25 microfarad 
25 volt electrolyte capacitor and a 1k ohm resistor and they go over here to this ground rail so we can go ahead and uh, install those two components and they go directly to ground and you know as you look on around we got pin 7 and we can see uh, pin 6 goes off into a uh, a 47 mic capacitor a point point oh forty seven microfarad capacitor and goes to our output so we can't put that in yet that's got to go to a terminal strip so there's this 1k ohm 100k ohm resistor coming off of pin 6 pin 5 4 and 3 is already done now on pin 2 we have a 1 meg ohm resistor going to ground but we also have a point double oh forty seven that is going to this circuit over here off of the input so we can't put that in yet and then pin 1 there is also a 100k ohm resistor that goes up that this uh, 0.01 here or 0.1 that goes to that uh, trouble switch on that leg that we left unsolded so terminal strip for that we might get by with just one terminal strip in this. We'll have to look at it and see. So I went ahead and installed a terminal strip over here. And yes, uh, whenever you install these, grind the paint off of both sides so that the hardware has something to uh, ground against. And use little star washers. Um, Pipe that I'm using under and above the terminal strips on these little tiny flat star washers. Same type that Johnson used in their equipment. And that's where you know they bite into it and makes a good ground, you know, good mechanical ground. So yeah, make sure that you uh, are doing that. And the reason I went ahead and installed the terminal strip. I was going to take the resistor, both of them connect to, uh, I think I said pin 8 and 9, but I only connect to pin 8, and they go to the ground rail. And it's kind of a tight bend to put these components from here to here, and I probably could have swung them around here and connected, but now I can just go from here to this ground lug over here. So I'll go ahead and get those installed now. Now in the terminal strip, you know, you got your main hole here, and then you got a hole down here that runs through the uh, fibrous material. I went ahead and brought the resistor up through that bottom hole and soldered it in place. Now I can uh, connect the uh, electrolytic here to this hole and run it down to pin 8. Because you don't want the capacitor right next to a resistor that might get hot. So uh, that's why I'm doing it that way. Okay, so that was our 1K resistor from pin 8 going to ground and our 10 microfarad at 25 volt going to ground. And pin 8 is the cathode of one part of the tube. And this is how it biases the cathode. Now, the term 12AX7 usually means 12 being 12 volt and yes that is possible you can put um, 12 volts on pin 5 and ground pin 4 and that will run the filament for both sides our circuit is 6 volt and that's why pins 5 and pin 4 are grounded and we can see the right here on the center of the filament it goes to pin 9 this is where our 6.3 volts will come in and that will light both sides or both filaments in that tube element so I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, filament wire so that will be connected ok so our filament string starts off over here at the filament terminal comes right around underneath the power switch comes over here to this ground wire coming off this control 
and then around and goes up here to pin 9 and I got it tacked on this side because we got to hook more um, wires up to the filament and actually we should have filament glow now if we plug this thing in uh, what do you think? <laughs> let me check it to see yep as you can see uh, both filaments are glowing in the tube ready As you can see I went ahead and mounted another terminal strip down here and the reason for that is that our high voltage is way over here this way I can run a wire around and come to here and then in our transmitter we can feed off to the 6V6 and the uh, 6NG7 tube to the uh, 6V6 and 6AG7 tube uh, remember the modulator 6V6 it's going to have uh, the higher voltage on it and the uh, mic preamp gets the lower voltage so this way we can spread our high voltage off to go to either side Right, what I want to do now is go ahead and run all high voltage and you know we got full high voltage here for the uh, output section and then we got a reduced high voltage here that will go to the preamp so what I'm going to do is go ahead and run two wires back and around and over here one of them will go here with the full high voltage the full B plus and then the other one to keep right on over and come over here to feed the preamp. That will be the low high voltage. Okay, as you can see, I got our B plus and our low voltage for our preamp connected. And they run here into this bundle and down across the back. Then they make a sharp 90 and come up. I installed this other terminal strip so I can terminate the, uh, the B plus on one of these terminals and then I can go ahead and route the preamp B plus on up here now when this gets up here looking at the schematic or the diagram we can see the B plus comes in it comes around this way goes through a 100k ohm resistor and goes to pin 6 and there's also a 0 .047 going to ground then if we look at the B plus it comes around comes to this terminal there is a 10 microfarad 450 volt going to ground we go through another 100k ohm resistor and we feed pin 1 which is the plates so of pin 1 and pin 6 is the plates of both tubes and they're both fed equally with 100k ohm resistors Okay, so in compliance with the schematic, we can see that our B plus comes down, comes over 100k ohm resistor, goes to pin 6, and then coming off of pin 6 is a 0 .047, and this is going to be the microphone output. So you can see here our B plus comes up, comes here to this next to last terminal. We have our 100k ohm resistor going to pin 6. Then we got that point double, point 0.047 capacitor coming to this terminal. And this will go to the output of the circuit and go into our modulator. Now I've got to run a, another 100k ohm resistor over to pin 1. As you can see right here on the schematic it goes to pin 1 and there is also a 10 microfarad 450 volt going to ground alright guys the uh, preamp is completely finished um, I'll put the input and the output and if you look here there's a single terminal strip over here there's the input capacitor and then we got the output capacitor coming over here to 
this empty terminal just everything kind of laid over to this one terminal so I wanted to keep the input over here by itself so it's actually in a stage now where we can uh, we can test this and uh, see if it's even working so I'm feeding a one kilohertz signal directly into the uh, oscilloscope bypassing the amplifier so we're going to connect up the amplifier to the input and output and see if it's working all right, I just want to do a quick little test. We'll look at the scope. Uh, the gain, treble, and bass is all the way down. The uh, flat, bright switch is in flat position. And we're going to bring up the gain just a little bit. We also hear it audible. And that's just cracked open a little bit. We'll turn the treble up. I cut the bass to maximum. Not really seeing a lot of changes on uh, the bass at this volume. I can cut the audio down. not so loud that way we can create the volume on up a little bit and that's right on off the scope go from flat to bright now you see on bright the waveform shrunk so the you know changes the frequency of the uh, signal that would be the maximum volume and maximum treble the uh, bass is about halfway but I can hear a difference in the tone when I change the bass again that's the bright back to flat treble down. The treble affects the volume quite a bit. I guess it's just the uh, the frequent response. I'm not an audio guy. You can see the pattern change just a little bit with the uh, bass control. And that's bright and back to flat Well, she's doing something. I'm not exactly sure how the uh, waveform on this is supposed to look. I know I tried my crystal mics in it and the crystal mics don't work. This is probably built more along the uh, lines for the Howl style microphones. Okay guys, we're going to end this uh, session here on the uh, mic preamp build of the AM transmitter. And if you notice there's a few extra controls already been added to the front of it 
and um, yeah the front panels back on it's been repainted again and the reason for that I don't know what happened but the last couple of segments during the mic preamp is uh, not there I pulled the uh, SD card out and looked when I was editing the video and that was it <laughs> so I don't know if I didn't press record or or something wacky happened but anyway I lost the uh, last few minutes of this segment so uh, we'll be getting into uh, the transmitter build next and when we do we'll do some further in-depth testing of the uh, audio circuit and if you see back here in this hole where the IFR Super S normally sits at it is not there that's because it's on the other bench and it's tore completely down I uh, turned it on and smoke came rolling out of the uh, side of it where the scope is at so that'll be another video for itself I am still in the midst of uh, going through that and finding out just what happened or why it happened so uh, until the next video guys and uh, we'll get into things a little more got a lot of stuff in here I'm working on at the time and out in the garage so uh, I know it's been kind of busy it's uh, almost September now so we hope to get some more videos here out soon anyway uh, take care and we'll see you in the next video bye now